I grew up in a pretty bad part of New York City. I am talking about things like gangs, drugs, and gunshots in the night. When you live in an area like that, being poor is a given. During that time, I constantly struggled with money. In fact, my net worth was negative for most of my early adulthood. It sucked, but I did notice some very clear patterns that almost all poor people experience. In this video, I am going to discuss 13 signs that you are poor and some ways to fix them. After all, this is a personal finance and business blog. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't cover ways to improve your financial situation. But I promise it won't be preachy or tedious. We'll cover simple, practical, and super effective ways to get more money in your pocket. Okay, let's get started. Number 1. You don't completely fill up. This is a classic sign that you're poor. When you're poor, you just don't have enough money in your account to fill up the tank all the way. This is a completely foreign concept to the rich, or even middle class. They have never had to wrestle with the impossible decision of buying gas or buying groceries. If you've ever gone to the pump and just put in $5 worth of gas to hopefully get you through the next couple of days, then you know what I'm talking about. And on the rare occasions when you have the money to fill up, a big worry is lifted from you. At least for a good while. Of course, not filling up your gas tank each time is inconvenient and ultimately more expensive over time. But it's not a huge problem by itself. But it is a symptom of a bigger issue. Simply put, your income is not enough to cover your expenses. How do you remedy this? The answer is simple, but not easy. Make more money. You can, of course, try to work more hours at your job if that is an option. You can also try to take on a second job. Personally, I like the idea of freelancing. With the emergence of the gig economy, there are lots of great options that don't require any prior experience or special degrees or licenses. If you are interested in learning more, I have written an article listing out the easiest freelance jobs for beginners. The link's in the description below. Number 2. You dream about winning the lottery. It's a pretty well-known fact that poor people play the lottery far more than rich people. The reasons are obvious. If you're rich, you've already kind of won the lottery. You don't need the money or lifestyle that winning a huge jackpot can provide. But if you are stuck in poverty, the lottery may seem like the only way out. They sell you the dream, and people eat it up. I used to play the lottery religiously each week. I did this not because I really thought I would win. I knew the odds were awful. I did because I was not satisfied with my life. I wanted a chance, no matter how slim, that my life could change miraculously in an instant. It's a compelling dream, but it's a false one. Of course, the right answer is to use the money that you spend on lottery tickets to build a better future for you. Here's how. You need to substitute that addiction to playing the lottery with a better addiction. The first step is taking that same money that you use to play the lottery and put it into a savings account. In fact, there are some really cool savings accounts that actually have a lottery feature. If you're interested in learning more, check out yada.com. Not only do they pay more than double the national savings rate, they offer you a chance to win big jackpots by giving you tickets when you make qualifying deposits into their account. The more you save, the more chances you get to win. This type of savings account scratches the lottery itch, but you're not out the cost of the lottery tickets. You still have every single penny you put into the savings account, plus a little more. And before long, you're going to see that balance increase and turn into real money. If you keep at it and don't withdraw it, that seed of money can become the start of real and lasting financial success for you. Number 3. An extra 20 bucks means a lot. When every dollar matters, 20 bucks is a big deal. So much can be done with that $20. After all, it can mean eating a decent meal out without regret. It can mean buying milk, bread, eggs, and other essentials. You could use it to help pay the electric bill or fill up your car with gas, as we already discussed. When you're poor, $20 matters, but not so with the rich and middle class. While it's nice to get an extra $20, it's not really going to influence their life in any way. It's just a mild benefit and a nice to have. Number 4. You can't survive without government aid. If you get food stamps, housing assistance, or any other government aid, then you know how important getting that assistance is for making your ends meet. If you can't imagine surviving without that type of aid, that's a pretty good indicator that you're poor. Not only will rich and middle class people not qualify for that type of government assistance, they'd be just fine without it. Now, I don't begrudge those who get government assistance. I used to get free lunch when I was in school. It allowed me to eat, and I am forever grateful that I live in a country that takes care of its people. 
Now, as an adult, I pay my taxes, and I'm happy that I can help others who may need aid, just like I did when I was a kid. But I have been on both ends of the spectrum and believe me, it's better to be making money and paying taxes than receiving government benefits. You don't know when those government benefits will be reduced or taken away. In short, you just aren't in control of your destiny. But it doesn't have to be that way. If you start to learn about personal finance and take baby steps to change your financial situation, you can get to a far better place in just a few short years. If you want to learn how to get started, check out my article below on the 5 Pillars of Personal Finance, where I go step by step into how you can stabilize and improve your financial life. Number 5. Each payday is a cause for celebration. I get it. Payday is a big deal. You go from having nothing to having real money. It's worth celebrating. But it means a whole lot more to poor people than it does to rich people. With the rich, it happens like clockwork and is really just part of the process for paying their bills each month. It's not usually accompanied by any excitement, nor do they view it as a reason to celebrate. Poor people, however, do get excited when payday rolls around. They may buy a nice meal, go out and party, or splurge on other things that they enjoy. It's a big difference in mentality and a very good indicator of whether you are rich or poor. Number 6. You are living paycheck to paycheck. Living paycheck to paycheck is a pretty good indicator that you are struggling financially. Poor people live paycheck to paycheck for a variety of reasons, but the most likely ones are that they don't make enough, or they don't budget well enough. We already covered some practical ways you can increase your income, so I won't go into that again. On the other hand, if your issue is that you can't seem to get your budget right, you're not alone. It's a very common problem. To learn how to solve it, check out my article below explaining the 10 biggest reasons why budgets fail and how to fix them. Number 7. Holidays and birthdays stress you out. Birthdays and holidays were always a great time for me as a kid, but I know they were stressful for my parents because money was so tight. Gifts can be expensive and, unless you have budgeted for them, they're going to throw you for a loop. When you're poor and don't have the flexibility to handle those types of one-off expenses, birthdays and holidays can be a really stressful time rather than a joyous one. Number 8. You're late paying your bills. When you're poor, paying your bills late and taking the bad hit to your credit score is common. This is because you just don't have enough to cover all of your expenses. You may have to make the choice between paying your rent and paying your credit card bills. In most cases, your credit card bills and other less essential bills are going to take a back seat. You promise to yourself that you'll pay them when you can, but that day never really comes. The stack of late bills piles up, and you enter into a vicious cycle of debt and collections. Many poor people have faced this situation or are still facing it. If you have a pattern of paying your bills late, chances are you're among the poor who struggle to make ends meet. Fortunately, with the emergence of technology, there are some cool tools to help you stay on top of your bills. First, you can use apps to help you with this. Mint is a leader in this space. They have a slick app that connects to all of your financial accounts and keeps track of your spending. They also track your bills and give you alerts so you can pay them on time. Finally, they have a budgeting application that helps you create a realistic budget based on how you spend. You can then use their daily budget tracker to see how your current spending affects how much money you'll have at the end of the month. It's a great way to know exactly where you stand in relation to your budget at any point in time. If your problem is simply that your monthly debts are just too large, one option is to permanently lower some of your bills. LowerMyBills.com is a free online service that allows consumers to comparison shop on various lending products and reduce the cost of living. Number 9. Your kids know better than to ask you to buy them anything. I'm sure many of you can relate to this. Kids are impulsive. It's just the way they are. If they want something, they're not going to hide their desires from you. That means that, left to their own devices, you'll be getting a lot of requests to buy candy or toys at the market, or the latest trendy thing that all the other kids at school have. But kids are also smart and they learn fast. After getting denied enough times, they figure out that asking is pointless and the requests die down. If your kids have reached that state, it's a pretty good sign that you are poor. Number 10. Use everything up to and sometimes past, it's useful life. Use it up. Wear it out. Make it do. Or do without. If this saying resonates with you, then you're either extremely frugal or you're financially struggling. Whether it's patching up clothes that have holes, fixing worn out or broken items throughout the house, or repurposing things so they last longer, if you have a habit of using things till they literally break down, this may be a sign that you're poor. 
Number 11. You're not future-oriented. This is one of the key indicators of being poor. When you are living hand-to-mouth, who has time or energy to be thinking about long-term goals for the future? You need to take care of immediate needs. Unfortunately, it's also the reason why I think poor people have a hard time breaking out of the poverty cycle. When you have a little breathing room, you can plan for the future, make better decisions, and ultimately make headway. But if you're trapped in really bad poverty, it's all you can do to stay afloat. This is why I find it amazing when people who are truly destitute make it out. I was never that poor, but even in the situation I was in, I remember how hard it was to break the cycle. I was constantly putting out financial fires, and you start to lose hope after a while. You start to think, I might as well enjoy myself a little when I can. And it leads to a never-ending cycle of poverty because you never save, you never accumulate wealth, and you never reach a better financial place. Number 12. You don't go to the doctor. Going to the doctor when you're sick is a luxury that poor people can't afford. So if you found yourself deciding not to go to a doctor because you don't want to pay the bill, you're probably among the many poor people who've made a similar choice. Unfortunately, this can seriously impact your health and wind up costing you more money in the long run. Don't let this happen. Check out the link to an article on how you can still get medical treatment even when you don't have money. Number 13. You value money more than time. This is a classic sign that you may be poor. Rich people value their time more than money. That's why they hire people to mow their lawns, pull their weeds, clean their gutters, and fix their toilets. They have plenty of money and value the limited amount of time that they have each day. They don't want to waste it doing mundane chores that they can outsource to someone else. But when you're poor and money's in short supply, you're willing to put in time instead to get the job done. You may wait at a bus stop and take an hour or two to get to work because you can't afford to buy a car. You may shovel your own walkway when it snows and hurt your back in the process because you don't want to waste your money hiring someone else to do it. It's a classic difference in mindset, and it is purely driven by disparities in wealth. So there you have it, 13 signs that you are poor and some great tips on how to fix them. If you enjoyed this video, please click on the like button. If you want to get more great content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel. It is a huge help, and I'd really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.